All right, we're close enough. Uh, I'd like to call to order the uh, special Woodstock Village meeting on May 14th, 2019. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to our moderator, Greg Camp. Good evening, everyone. Um, we're going to, I'm going to run just the special meeting about certain articles that have been warned, and we'll go through them one at a time. Um, we'll follow Robert's rules, so I will need a motion and a second in order to get them on the floor for any questions or discussion that you might have. And only uh, village voters can make those motions and seconds. If you would, state your name so that our, our man at the helm here, Don, can write those down for the minutes. That would be quite helpful and try to speak clearly so we can be heard. And any complaints about the weather goes to the trustees, not the moderator. Okay, the citizens of the village of Woodstock who are legal voters, the village of Woodstock, County of Windsor, State of Vermont, are hereby warned to meet at the Woodstock Town Hall in said village on the 14th day, May 2019 at 7 p.m. to act upon the following articles. <coughs> Seven o'clock, we're ready to go. Article one, to see if the village will vote either or both of the exemptions listed for the buildings known as the homestead located on land owned by the homestead incorporated for the period of five years which was put to us by petition to get on the ballot as an article um, a <clears throat> exemption from all local property taxes including local education highway and town general and b exemption from state education property taxes and to raise property tax by property taxation, the sum of money to pay the exempted amount <coughs> to uh, approximately uh, in entirely. Excuse me. Anyone want to make a motion on Article 1? So moved, Corwin Sharp. Thank you. A second? Yeah. Okay. Any questions or discussions on Article 1? Seeing none. All those in favor? <coughs> By the sign, aye, please. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Article one carried. Article two, to see if the village will vote either or both of the exemptions listed for the buildings known as the Mertens House, located on land owned by Homestead Incorporated for a period of five years, also brought to us by petition. A, exemption from all local property taxes, including local education highway and town general, and B, exemption from the state education property taxes <coughs> to raise by property taxation a sum of money to pay the exempted amount to the appropriate entity. Do I have a motion on Article 2? Why are you looking at me? Got no. <laughs> <laughs> that motion. Corwin, yeah. so moved. Second? <coughs> okay. Okay, Joe. <laughs> Got it. Great. Um, it's on the floor. Questions, <coughs> comments, discussion? Hearing none, I will put it to a vote. All those in favor of Article 2 as presented, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Article 2 carries as presented. Article 3, I know there's a little repetition to see if the village will vote either or both of the exemptions listed below for the land and buildings owned by the Woodstock Masonic Association for a period of five years, also put forth by petition. Um, a, exemption from all property taxes, including local education, highway, and town general. B, exemption from the state education property taxes and to raise by property taxation a sum of money <coughs> to pay the exempted amount to the appropriate entity. Can I get a motion on Article 3? Make a motion. Carry. Yep, yeah, carry. Up front. Second. Seconded. Thank you, Jeff. Questions or comments on Article 3? Hearing none, all those in favor of Article 3 as presented, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And Article 3 carries. Article 4, to see if the village of Woodstock will vote either or both of the exemptions listed below and the land, <coughs> excuse me, for the land and buildings known as the Simmons House, owned by the Ottaquichi Health Foundation for a period of five years, brought to us by petition. A, exemption from all local property taxes, including local education, highway and town general. B, exemption from the state education property taxes <coughs> to be raised 
excuse me, to raise by property taxation the sum of the money to pay the exempted amount to the appropriate entity. Looking for a motion on Article 4. I'll make a motion to accept. Here we go, more participation. A second. Here we'll do the second. Questions or comments on Article 4? Hearing none, all those in favor of Article 4 as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, same sign. Article 4 carries as presented. <coughs> Art Article 4, twice, well, Article 5. Um, to see if the village will vote either or both exempt <coughs> of the exemptions listed below for the land and buildings owned by Woodstock Associates, known as the Woodstock Recreational Center for a period of five years, presented to us by petition. A, exemption from all local property taxes, including local education, highway, and town general. B, exemption from the state education property taxes, and to raise by property taxation the sum of money to pay to the exempted amount to the appropriate entity. All those in favor of Article 5? Signify by saying aye. aye. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make a I got motion. going too quick. Thank you. I'll second. Oh, down at the end. <coughs> got a second. All. Any questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor of Article 5 as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, and those opposed, same sign. Okay. Motion carries. Um, Article 3, to act upon any other business to legally become before the special meeting, not the regular village trustee meeting. Any other? I'd just like to make a comment for those at home uh, to be aware of that the exemptions we just made, plus a couple of others in the village, result in uh, approximately $10,453 of just village taxes that will not be collected, <coughs> uh, just for your knowledge. Thank you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Comments? That's total, Jeff? That's total for the village only. And that includes the ones that were passed at the regular town at the village meeting, correct? Correct, yes. And then again, just village? Correct. Okay. Why do you emphasize just village? What other taxes are there? Well, there's the town taxes. Oh, town taxes. State education tax. Which would be a larger. That which is the largest. Yeah. <coughs> other questions, comments? Motion? Then I would look for a motion to adjourn the special portion of the village meeting. Joe, and then Carol second? Or are you got a question? No, I wanted to be first. But ah! Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 That's why he sat up front. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or questions? Yes, next year. Please get them in on time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not saying it was you, but I mean the organizations. It okay. should be done at a no, regular village it was meeting, a ideally. Error on the town. Yes, it was. It was our error on certain ones. Other errors on other ones. Okay. Okay. Just an error. Well, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Thank you all for your patience and your participation. All those in favor of adjournment of the special meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. The special meeting is adjourned. Turn things back over to the chair, Jeff Conn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. So at this point, I'd like to call to order the regular Town of Woodstock Board of Village Trustees meeting at 709. And we'd like to start with uh, uh, the uh, auditor's report. And if you please come join us at the table, we would appreciate that. John Mudgett from Mudgett and Crow Wisner. I did tell Tyler that he was going to get to do most of the talking tonight, so I, I'm going to sit back here and, and unless there's something uh, uh, that uh, I really feel a need to jump in on. I, I, Tyler has really taken the lead on this this year and he has been back and forth a number of times uh, getting us to this point. So uh, I just want to say thank you, Tyler, and uh, we also uh, want to thank you. Uh, uh, Anna, Zoe, and others not at the table for their assistance in getting uh, us an audit report. Although 
Uh, we are a little later this year than we like to be. Uh, I knew it was uh, the right day for the meeting when I woke up this morning and there was snow on the ground because there's always snow on the ground when I come to your meetings. <laughs> I'm just grateful that it melted before we had to drive here. That's great. With that uh, said, I'm going to turn it back over to Tyler to uh, to uh, give him a brief uh, uh, overview. Mm -hmm. And I also would invite all of the folks around the table to chime in at any time. Questions are always welcome. We like to have a roundtable discussion, and we're going to be watching to see who's got good notes on the piece of the report. Can I ask something? You said that this was late. Later than you'd want it to be. When is it normally hand could we handle this? Usually, we're meeting with you in December or January. Uh, uh, usually, the <coughs> reports are complete and in your hands by November. Were we the holdup, or you guys were backlogged? Uh, we got to say that you were the holdup primarily because normally we're scheduling work in the fall. But unfortunately, some of the reconciliations and uh, uh, so forth had not been completed. And that involved <coughs> coming back for later work than, than what we normally uh, would do. Okay, Pretty much the end of December is when the last key reconciliation was done. Okay. For us to really start. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you for answering that. <coughs> Yes, so um, I just want to briefly go over. Um, you should have two draft documents. Hopefully they're dated March 19th, 2019. Uh, the first is a, just a three-page letter called the governance letter. And it is a communication of um, you know, key aspects of the audit, um, other key communications that were required to, to put forth uh, as a result of the audit. And um, just wanted to briefly go over, we've already started to talk about that, the audit, it happened later this year. Uh, it really happened in January and February of 2019. <coughs> Normally it happens much earlier, you know, like in September. Um, so that was one, one change from the prior year. There was one, um, if you're looking at these statements and reports, the other document, there's one policy change, more or less, and it has to do with the uh, fund balances in the capital <coughs> reserve fund. Uh, a lot of the amounts in that capital reserve fund used to be committed, but then there was a change in that if um, there's not a separate voter article for an amount, they are now classified as assigned rather than committed. So if you were looking through this other larger document, um, that is one change that you'll see. Aside from that, there are not too many changes in policy or uh, accounting standards. Um, we proposed 12 audit adjustments during the audit, and management also provided us 12 audit adjustments. Those adjustments range from a variety of um, areas, adjusting <coughs> balance sheet accounts, such as capital assets and depreciation, um, some capital reserve equity amounts, just making sure things tied to the prior year, and reconciled, and a few other balances. Um, it did take some significant time this year to reconcile some key transaction cycle areas, such as property taxes. Um, that is mostly done at the town level, but it does carry obviously down to the village, so um, the village was related in that reconciliation. And then the village's permanent fund. Um, those books and records are kept separate, but they ultimately have to tie in to all the other village funds, so there was some significant time there to tie things <coughs> back and forth and make sure everything reconciled. Um, and then there is a material weakness that you may have seen at the very end of this other report. And I'll go into that here in a second. Mm -hmm. That pretty much does it for this small three-page document. And the next document is the <coughs> says financial statements and independent auditors <coughs> reports. It's about 41 pages long. And I'm just going to briefly go over uh, some highlights. If anybody has questions, just jump right in because I can easily go into more detail if you'd like. Um, pages one and two, you'll see the independent auditor's report. And that just expresses a series of unmodified opinions <coughs> and various opinion units, um, basically saying that these statements and other pieces of information in this document conform to 
the GASB, <coughs> counting standard, counting standards that the uh, village is required to adhere to. So that's good. No, no departures there. Um, pages 11 and 12 show financial statements. A question for you, yeah. pass there. Um, yeah. On page 3, just for future reference, um, I think you need to make a correction. You say these uh, services include road maintenance, and that is no longer uh, in the <coughs> village trustee d domain, the village domain. Which paragraph on page two? Uh, Management's paragraph. discussion and analysis, the third paragraph down. Oh, no, the second paragraph down. So just for future, um, if you would make that change. Uh, sidewalks and road maintenance. Um, okay. Street lights too, right? Mm -hmm. I suppose street lights too, yeah. So those those have changed. To the town. Uh, excuse me, Jeffrey. Uh, you, I was making notes. You said the road maintenance, but did you extend that to say that the the uh, sidewalk, sidewalks, street lights, street lights, right? The others, public safety, planning and zoning, uh, parks. Those would still be in our domain. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. You could be both. Sidewalks are not in your domain. No. We all get to share in the sidewalks, the whole town. <coughs> okay. Continue, sorry. No, no, that's fine, yeah. Um, <coughs> pages 3 to 10, that's, as you point out, the management's discussion and analysis. Uh, every year, Anna has great joy in writing up that document and getting it reviewed by everybody. <laughs> um, I was just going to say pages 11 and 12, you'll see the, that's a set of financial statements that show the village as a whole. And you'll see a positive net position in both of those statements, so that's a good thing. No deficits. And the fund financial statements, um, the governmental funds on pages 13 through 16, actually 17 as well, um, like the general fund, the capital reserve fund, uh, no deficit fund balances there. Question so, here, though. Yeah. Among, in the capital reserve fund, mm -hmm. how could we identify what might be expendable as opposed to assigned? If you look, there's a, there's a, there's a footnote that details the amounts in the capital reserve fund. Note 9. Note 9. Page 28. Yeah. Actually, note 9 starts on page 27. You give a kind of summarized table there, but yeah, 28 would be the better one. <coughs> So if you're on page 28, you'll see all these assigned balances mm -hmm. for the, the different, you know, items, snow blower, storage trailer, and per your policy, that is going to be detailed on page 25, at the top of page 1. <coughs> You'll see the definition of assigned, which is quote, assigned fund balance includes amounts that are intended to be used by the village for specific purposes as authorized for the board of trustees. So in a nutshell, those assigned balances are amounts that per the board of trustees' approval can get used. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and then you'll see you do have assigned balances, but you really don't have um, any unassigned balances, just amounts that have not been allocated to something already. But that's not to say the, the board couldn't yeah. reassign. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's just an act of the trustees yeah. mm -hmm. to, uh, to unassign, if yeah. you will, or to release the assignment for general use. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, I see some things there that we could consider doing that with. Sorry, continue. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Um, just wanted to highlight on the notes. In fact, the table we were just looking at is what I wanted to highlight. There was a change in the policy there. Those amounts that we just looked at that were assigned, um, last year they used to be classified as committed. Um, but 
since those amounts aren't being approved by a separate voter article specific to like a snowblower, as, as an example, um, those amounts would be better classified as assigned. Um, so it's really the board moving excess funds over to the capital reserve fund. Mm -hmm. um, really, the next thing I have on my list is to talk about the material weakness at the end of the report. Does anybody have questions on anything else? <coughs> so comparatively to other, because you guys do this to, for a lot of other towns around, ever since Irene, we don't really have a rainy day fund. Were there any places in there where you can see where we can start? Well, I think your capital reserve fund is, a, is you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to say rainy day fund, but you know you could think of that because it's <coughs> basically assigned funds that you know with your approval you guys could you know use. Well, reassign, right? Or reassign and then use if the board you know, approved it. No, but were there other parts where things are assigned? Like, are we spending too much in certain areas that equivalent towns or villages or whatever are not spending as much as we are? Oh. I, I would jump in there and say, <coughs> I don't think so, but it, it really comes down to <coughs> budgeting philosophy and where you, each year as you build the general fund budget, you think about where you want to allocate resources and how much uh, money will you then raise to cover that. <coughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not that any one account looks out of line. Uh, we do see an awful lot of variation, of course, you, as you think about the state of Vermont, uh, and there's a wide variety of, of, of uh, types of towns, villages, cities, and the resources that they have available. Uh, and there's also a big variety in how <coughs> voters vote and how boards interpret uh, what they uh, to do right, that. like you're, you're basically answering my question. Was there, like, when you look at ours, you're like, wow, I can't believe they spent that much yeah, money on no, nothing, that. Nothing, yeah, nothing, nothing. The, that's, uh, I think, an important thing we, to understand. We, we at, I just want to add, yeah, over the years, as we've looked at Woodstock, we've said that's a well managed <coughs> town and village. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> Mistake. Mm -hmm. We've seen other towns with a lot of long term debt, you know, and interest principal obligations. I mean, looking at your balance sheet, there's not hardly any really long, actually there's really no long-term debt, at least what I see here. And, um, you know, you don't have a deficit. Your fund balances are all positive, so that's a good thing, for sure. Right, but then there's like getting involved in paying for infrastructure and, and maybe we haven't been doing that and that's why mm -hmm. we're not showing mm -hmm. a debt maybe our school or <coughs> or town hall or something like that need desperately need updating mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even though the money should be put aside for that we're showing positive because we're not spending money on that mm -hmm. right sidewalk <coughs> Th those tend to be different philosophies in different areas though whether to whether to put money aside to build toward a project, or whether to <coughs> borrow upfront, pay over time, uh, those that support that tend to tell me, John, we want the users to pay for it down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 just simply different philosophies of different boards in different <coughs> communities. And the capital assets that are on the books, <coughs> I'm looking at page 11, they, they totaled about 2.6, 2.7 million. They're about 1.1, 1.2 million dollars depreciated. So almost halfway depreciated based on an estimated useful life. So it's maybe one indicator that you can go off of as to where things are. Thank you. I appreciate your answering that. I have a question that you might not know the answer to. How are these uh, capital reserved uh, assigned, or how have they typically been assigned? These every year are they just duplicated? Is they're more or less uh, they're more or less line items in the budget. 
Yeah. And it specifically says, you know, cappers or, uh, you know, snowblower or something like that. So then at the yeah. end of the year, it, tr it gets transferred from the general fund to the capital reserve fund where it sits. And then in like a next year's budget, it would get budgeted to be used and there'd be a line item for capital, I think like capital reserve spending, I think mm -hmm. is what I've seen. So that money would then transfer back from the capital reserve to the general fund and get used. Yeah. And, some things, it was, and some things we're doing, you know, like saving for a police cruiser, we add yeah. to that e e each year. So eventually we can buy the next police cruiser. Right. Um, that's the kind of thing we would not want to unassign. But there are other things here, and not tonight at this meeting, but other things here we can consider that would free up some money if we wanted to assign them otherwise. Yeah, we, we, we frequently see assigned or committed dollars uh, and then below that line an unassigned. Which, uh, one, one of my town managers used to say, John, just tell me what the free money is, because he always thought of that unassigned as being, oh, that's what I have available to either apply against a future uh, tax rate or uh, assign for some particular project. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, if everybody's good, I'll just move on to page 41. And that highlights the finding. You'll see the title 2018-001 Financial Procedures and Oversight. Yes. And uh, I'm sure you have all been aware that the big issue um, that was the result of this finding was just the, um, the timeliness of bank reconciliations and other reconciliations that um, took place a lot later this time around. Um, you'll see in the first sentence of this finding, the, uh, the last bank <coughs> reconciliation that is for a very key account that includes both town and village monies uh, wasn't done until really late December. Um, and basically, for us to start the audit, that reconciliation needs to be done because um, if it's not done, you know, stuff could be out of balance. Um, as an instant, as for instance, if you read farther down, you'll see that about forty-six thousand dollars worth of grant funds had come in during the year, but they were simply not recorded in the books and records for the village. So, if you were looking at a profit and loss statement for fiscal year eighteen before the end of December you wouldn't have seen that amount. Yeah. Um, so stuff was misstated beforehand. So this finding is simply, you know, communicating that, what we see, and uh, a, a recommendation that these bank reconciliations need to get done more timely. <coughs> and, uh, since this finding's been written, we've chatted with accounting staff, Zoe and Anna, and they are working on steps to fix the, the problem. Great. Uh, they, they've, they've also uh, are using <coughs> Nemric mm -hmm. to assist with that, yeah. to bring it up to date is my understanding. Mm -hmm. I think along with that, it's probably good to talk about the, the second auditor's report that goes right along with the material weakness finding, the description. Because if, if you're looking at the findings, it's probably helpful to jump back to page 39, the auditor's report on compliance and control. Because what we're really describing is a, a, a weakness in the control structure for the accounting system for the village. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you, the definition on page 39, and I'm just going to read it to get it on the record, a deficiency in internal control exists when the design or operation of a control does not allow management or employees in the normal course of performing their assigned functions to prevent or detect and correct misstatements on a timely basis. A material weakness is a deficiency or a combination of deficiencies in internal control such that there is a reasonable possibility that a material misstatement in the village's financial statements will not be prevented or detected and corrected on a timely basis. Uh, that's clearly what was happening here because as part of the reconciliation process that Ty was referring to, that is when uh, <coughs> transactions are analyzed to determine if they're assigned correctly, uh, if 
that. And you mentioned an example of things not being recorded that should have been, because when you do the reconciliation and it doesn't work, you have to go and figure out why it doesn't work and then make the correction in the books and records. So that, uh, that it's important to do that on a timely basis. And uh, when auditors talk about material, well, just think big because we're, we're, we're not looking for the small stuff. We're, we're saying, okay, is, were there, were there, were there a, have been big misstatements as a result of not having identified those corrections and recording them in books and records? Absolutely important. I wanted to make sure that we get that perspective as you think about what we say. How often are the accounts being reconciled now? On a monthly basis. Okay. How often are you? Monthly. We, monthly. Yeah. Sometimes they minute to minute. Yeah. Are you finished with it yet? Can we have it? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so right now we do have Cynthia from Nimerick coming to help us, you know, be a sack of pair of eyes, mm -hmm. help us to make sure that they are um, you know, getting done in a timely <coughs> manner, looking at different operations procedures to make sure that that's you know, realistic, that the manpower is there, that all the information is good, and we're able to um, present that to the select board, the, the trustees, in a timely manner monthly for your meetings as well. So you're looking at accurate numbers. That's great. Yeah. And so you uh, anticipate being able to get back to the schedule that in the past that has most definitely, yes. So the yeah, we're doing a lot of streamlining uh, right now to make sure that that can happen. That's great. Yeah. Software updates? Do you? Not so much software updates because the software is there. <coughs> um, we just wanted to find a more efficient way to use what was already there. Okay. Um, and, and so I think we're in a good position. I think, you know, it's been a good, it's been a good <coughs> month of, mm -hmm. of piecing things back together and getting in a good flow of of things so. and to give you an idea I believe they're reconciled up through March at this point mm -hmm. um, which this time last year was not where they are so they're only you know they're still catching up but they're almost to that point and mm -hmm. they're at a point Cynthia said the other day where she was actually seeing the numbers match up <coughs> to, um, versus having to find the numbers so nice, yeah. it's really it's be, it's starting to come full circle and we're being able to match things up and get things reconciled. But do you guys feel that if our town and village were one entity that a lot of these things that are being split up constantly <laughs> would be much easier and this audit it could be much more timely handled? I think we're too close to that issue to really give a good opinion. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, I was here the last time it was there was a merger, and it was like, is this better or is this better? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about every time that our bills have to be split. Ev it's every it's time they have to be split, yeah. town, village, sewer, town, village, sewer, then combined back again, then separate bills paid, then separate reconciliations done from town, village, sewer. That's got to take a heck of a lot more time than if it was a one entity unit. I think, yeah, that you always have separation by, uh, between funds, so there, there's, there's always going to be some separation. Uh, having a town and a village in two, you know, does increase the complexity, no question about it. And if you had been able to combine the two and have one general fund instead of two, yeah, that, that's, that's got to be a, a time saver. Mm -hmm. And what the, the flip side of that is to say what might save time there would cost us money in terms of uh, uh, ability to raise funds through grants, having two government entities, which has worked in our favor. Just to make a counterpoint every time I hear something where, which is a little more difficult having two governments, on the other hand, it works in our favor in terms of the monies we're able to bring in because of that. So okay. Right, but that timing could supersede we But we're not going to have this conversation here. Correct. That was a good point, Jeffrey. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate it. Sure. So, um, anything? Any other questions so far? So, essentially, the village is in good shape by this. Bottom line. Yeah, Bottom no, no fund deficits. Um, yeah. Okay. That's it. 
can go now. And uh, I think that's it then. Thank you so much. That was a, a, a very clear, clear way of presenting to us. I appreciate that and the thoroughness of this report. And uh, and we appreciate the work that you've done. Thank, Thank you. you. And we'll hopefully see you next year on a timely manner. <laughs> yes, we'll see you earlier in the year next year. Moving along, at this point, uh, I'd like to call for any citizens' comments. Uh, oh, this is time for citizens' comments, if there are any. What's that? Uh, Phil, um, at this point, the others yeah. are done. Uh, are you feeling up for staying, or do you want to? Uh, oh, yeah, I'll hang with you. I'm comfortable. Okay, that's that's good. Thank you, Phil. You're, you're very welcome. Um, okay, hearing no citizens' comments, let's move on to uh, request for permits. And the first up is uh, the Woodstock Alumni Parade, June 16th, from... Oh, before I... Sorry. Uh, I just need a motion <coughs> for you guys to approve the auditor's report. I'll make a motion to okay. approve the auditor's report. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, back to the Woodstock Alumni Parade. Do we have someone here to address that? Um, other than the documents that we have. Uh, the ones that uh, I've read through uh, show no change that I can detect between uh, uh, previous uh, alumni <coughs> parades. I move we approve the application as submitted. I second. Any discussion on that parade? Yes, Beth. I have, I have a feeling it's the 15th, not the 16th. The 16th is the 15th. It is yeah. the 15th. Sorry. I thought you said the 16th. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a misprint on the uh, agenda. It's correct on the permit application. Sorry about that. But thank you for the correction. Uh, it is the 15th. Okay, any other discussion on that? Uh, if, if not, I would entertain a motion. <coughs> We did that. We did that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The parade is approved as presented. Uh, next up, we have sustainable Woodstock Bookstock, um, July 26th to 29th, from Thursday at 8 a.m. until Sunday at 4 p.m. And uh, again, uh, I don't. So no major changes. I don't see, uh, is anyone to speak here just wants to speak to that? Sustainable Woodstock is listed, which is unusual. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, I don't know why that is, Beth, do you? Um, in his application, it says sustainable name of an address of nonprofit organization requesting permission to use the green sustainable Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah. For did Peter, um, Bruce Hanier, put the Jordan, Jordan Angle. Jordan Angle did. So, are you involved in? We're the fiscal agent for. The You're the fiscal event. agent for them. Okay, so that part. Okay, that's understandable. Um, I don't see any any changes. It calls for no changes in terms of use of the green, really, and they've uh, got a plan for recycling receptacles and so forth on Sunday. And I'm assuming that they're saying that they're going to direct traffic because that's to go to parking at Billings. We're going to be directing traffic towards Billings. The, so I think one of the venues is at Billings. There's multiple venues for book stock? No, I don't think so. I don't yeah. know about that. Joe, do you, yeah, do you know anything about the uh, I did a traffic? Well, no, I work on the Okay. Yeah. Beth, do you have an idea? Well, there are multiple venues, but yeah. I will say that it should only be to the 28th, not to the 29th. And then this one has, a, his application has the 29th. Yeah. Is that a Sunday? That's a Monday. Oh, okay. no. I believe it's because he's leaving. Because the tents will be up. Oh, to clean up the tents on Monday morning. Yeah. Because uh, what, what's that company? Um, they won't pick up on Sunday night. Right. That's 
So it would make sense why it's there. Yeah. Okay. So other than not understanding directing traffic to Billings Farm, uh, I didn't know there was multiple venues. Yeah. I moved to approve, presented, submitted. I'll second. Uh, any further discussion? All uh, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that that carries. We want to get that clarified about the traffic to go this morning, but that's, it's not a big deal. No. Uh, next up, we have uh, the Porsche Club of America, which mm -hmm. sounds like fun. Um, and uh, this is from on September 5th from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, an auto show on the green. Is anyone here knowing about that? I don't know anything about how many. You know, I, I was concerned that they mean on or around the green. This is separate from the one that was previously. It that is was separate. Yes. Yeah, that was that's separate. That's different. Um, so eat. when is the date of the pre previously approved one? May. That's, that's coming this right coming up. Oh, that's coming it right is this Saturday. Yeah, yeah okay. that's completely different. And that one's Elm Street, yes? Yes. yes. Okay. Julie was supposed to be here tonight. Um, I'm not sure where, where she is. Um, as far as I know, um, the whole entire inn has been rented out by the Porsche Club of America. Um, I believe they are going to have... Porsches around as well as on the green like they have had. They've <laughs> had an event like this in the past, I guess, um, as well as um, down Court Street. Well, you. thank you, Beth. I have other questions as well. Let's let's put this off till the next month and ask them to have a representative here, please. Right, it's not until September anyway. Uh, yeah. yeah, so let's put it on the agenda for next month so we can find out a bit more about this. Let's table that one. Uh, next, we have uh, a request from Woodstock Sports. Oh no! Wait a minute. We don't. We have something else, don't we? No, that's right. Woodstock Sports. No, Woodstock Sports right. is that right? Okay. A request from Woodstock Sports. Uh, every year, they come before us and they ask for two planters to be put out on the brick near Central Street in front of their store, <coughs> and uh, we have always said yes. And this year. They're wanting to know if they could be grandfathered so they don't have to ask every single year. Um, and I'd like, you know, some input from the rest of the trustees. Personally, I, I don't see a problem with that so long as they're willing to assume liability for those planters and what might happen to them or anyone because of them uh, being located on the street. And if we uh, include that, I wouldn't have a problem with allowing them to do this on a yearly basis. I would but say uh, the grandfather should only go as long as these are the people who were applying for the permit as Woodstock Sports. So if there's a change of ownership? If there's a change of ownership or a change of anything, that it should have to be, because we understand what they're doing, but who knows what that means for planters for somebody else. But then I'd have no issue with it. That's a good point. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Mm -hmm. Is anybody interested in making a motion to? I make a motion to, to allow a grandfathered in two planters for the ownership of Woodstock, current ownership of Woodstock Sports, to be able to put out yeah their planters every year. And have a some liability for it. And they are liable for it. I'll second that. Any other? Ideas on that? Does that sound good to everyone? I think that's what makes sense. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Beth, would you let them uh, send them something with the wording that Carrie put out? Uh, as you would. If I can figure out his wording, yes. Well, okay. And we'll, we'll we <laughs> try to keep. Trying to keep. We can go back <laughs> over that. I'll back over that with you. That was. I'll go with you, uh, Macy. I'll I'll go back to you on that one. Thank you. Yeah, if you could send that down over to Peter and such, that would be great. All right. Next on the agenda, which I lost somewhere underneath my pile of papers. What's up next? East End Eats. East End Eats. East End Eats. Right. Yeah. Okay, is anyone here um, from Sustainable Woodstock that can talk to us about East End Eats, which is uh, for use of the East End Park and Maxim Meadow Roadway 
on, sa on Saturday, September 14th for a food truck event. What would you like to know? <laughs> How would this be different, first of all, from the last food truck event? Um, that, as we were familiar how that went, that was quite mm -hmm. successful, and I don't recall any problems. The trucks will be up top and not down. Some of them will be down, but some the majority of them will be on the top. Well, some will be down in the parking. Yes. Okay. Yeah, those that were last year. Last year. Those were last year. All of them are. Where, where are the people that Just up along the top. Just along will that be track? taking away parking spaces? I don't know that much yeah, about it. Possibly take some, I guess. Close off. I, I, I had to But work. you know, we get so many people that they I, it was unbelievable. spills out. Yeah. Was it from the same time, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. last year? No, no. no. It wasn't as long. Was That's it? not the, the time frame of the actual event. I think that includes set up and clean up. Yeah. Oh, what's the time it's frame? 11 to 6. 11 to 6. It's 11 to 6, okay. And other than that, it's longer though, than it was <coughs> last year. Yeah. Um, other than that, there's no other substantial changes. All right. Um, I, I would just make a suggestion um, that the parking be handled very carefully, just because it could have very easily gotten out of hand yeah. last yeah. year, and it kind of did. Um, so uh, there was, d yeah, there was yeah. definitely traffic issues. So there needs to be several people managing the situation. Yeah. The problem is nobody wants to leave. What? I said the problem is nobody wants to leave. Yeah, <laughs> which is great, yeah. right? You want people to kind of hang out, but um, yeah, there, it needs to be. Is it is it in such a guided. way that that we need a police presence there? Did we? Have, I don't call having one. No. You did not require one last year. No. Um, but we have discussed the fact that we need more volunteers this year. Especially for the parking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, yeah. How do you how are you going to get the word out to people where to park? That can be done through signage, Jeff, or it can also be done if we have we'll have volunteers up directing people where to park. But it also can be done through signage. Okay. Yeah, I think Temporary that's, I think signage. That's the trickiest thing you need to deal with. So I'm glad you're going to keep up. Yes. Uh, people to work with. But I remember going down there and parking behind some other business because there was nowhere to park. Yeah. Yeah. There was no no one or signage or anything to say you yeah. to do that. So. Maybe in your social media you can ask the village locals to walk. That's a good point. Good point. Sir. Good point, Karen. <laughs> yep. Um, so I would entertain a motion. I move to approve as presented. I'll second that. Okay, any other questions or discussion on this? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. It should be fun, and I love that it's that time of year because things are quieter, and so September yeah. 14th is a, it's a great time to do that. Yeah, we're kind of placing it just before foliage <coughs> season. So that but not intervening with yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, so. We, we also consulted with that. with that. Yeah, that's great when organizations work together like that. So much smoother. That's wonderful. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Next up. Yes, Chief. Is the report from uh, <coughs> our village police, Joe? Yes, hi. Good afternoon. So uh, this week is National Police Memorial Week. Uh, on May 17th, there's a memorial at the Vermont Police Academy and Officer Ryan LeBlanc will be singing the National Anthem and um, Chief Bush will be reading off names of Vermont's fallen officers from over the years. Um, on April 26, we conducted a cell phone enforcement plan and wrote seven tickets in two hours, five of which for cell phone use. Um, so that remains a priority for us for enforcement. Where was that? Yeah. Um, it was right on Central and Pleasant Street, um, right downtown. The chief um, was spotting and calling out to myself and to also Ryan LeBlanc for vehicles that were in violation. And, and what kind of reaction did you get from those folks? Um, it's usually pretty uh, it, 
there's usually an admission and you know it's often accompanied by an acknowledgement that they don't usually text and drive, but <laughs> I tend to doubt that part. Right. <laughs> the worst time they've ever done it. Um, but yeah, they're texting. They're not. Well, they're it's talking. it's a combination. I don't remember the exact okay. breakup, but yes. But even it's just the, just using uh, their phone even in their using hands. your phone in any manner, uh, manipulating internal controls. Got it. Is and and what and one. so what was the what's the penalty? Uh, it depends. It's. Um, Starts at 162 um, for talking, and it goes up to the high 200s for texting, with Ooh. two to five points. And two to five points. Yes, yeah, that's the big thing. Yeah, so no, that's in, awesome. in, in every case, based partly on your discretion, or is there discretion, or is there room for warnings, or is that not the policy? There, uh, tickets. There's always officer discretion. Um, I think for especially for texting that it's important to enforce strictly. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, Officer Lucott is um, transitioning from full-time back to part-time. Uh, so we'll be advertising for a full-time vacancy soon. So, so that's right. unfortunate to, to lose him. I think he was a good community asset. Yes. Excellent community. Absolutely. That's, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, on May 18th, the prom will be held at the Woodstock Country Club, so we'll have an additional patrol or patrols on duty uh, through the weekend from May or weekends from May 19th to June 2nd. We'll have extra patrols on for the Memorial Day weekend with a uh, clicker ticket and Governor's Highway Safety for DUI patrol. And then, of course, Memorial Day Parade, roads will be shut down, and we'll all be out there directing traffic for the parade. Mm -hmm. And last, but uh, two, actually two other things. Uh, Covered Bridges Half Marathon is June 2nd, so uh, people can expect traffic delays, especially at Route 12. And last but not least is the meters report. So, let's see, for April of 2018, revenue were 7211 dollars and 20 cents for April of 2019 meter revenue was eight thousand four hundred and twenty six dollars and eighty cents so that's an increase of one thousand two hundred fifteen dollars and sixty cents from April of 18 to April of compared to April of 19. Any, any change in credit card percentage? Um, I didn't go through it and it's fine point print so I don't have an <laughs> exact answer for you right now. Okay. All right. How much of that I think I think they're tending to go up as a trend. Uh, how, the, the how, much is, how much does the village actually receive? I mean somebody else gets a piece of the action, right? Yes. A large piece. A large piece. Yeah. And the village receives what? Forty percent, fifty percent, sixty percent? I don't know the, I don't know that exact number. Okay. What so when somebody receives <coughs> the state? No, the, by the meter company. No, the meter oh, company. right, that's what you mean. The yeah, no, they yeah. get, there's... You know, they've yeah. got the merchant... They, they get the little bill, smush. You know, yeah. the credit card usage. I don't so. think it's more than 30, 30 I don't know. Well, it's 13 well, yeah. cents, I think, for well, just the... It's a combination of fixed fees and percentages. It's a combination of fixed fees and percentages. So it's not consistent, but it's... Yeah. Actually, if you look, it's a lot. Uh, credit card percentage. Yeah, I'm gonna say the percentage thing. So, so Jeff, how's, when how's that done? Do they got the money and give you what you got coming, or is it the other way around? How, how does that happen? They they take it. They take it. They take it, they and then they give it. you what the, the village is entitled to. Yes, we get. Yes, we get you get a check once a month. Goes right to an account. You what? It goes, goes right into account. an account. And then to answer your question, credit card percentage was 27.94% in April of 18, and it's 31.46% in April of 19. So it's, it so is it's trending still, still trending up. Still trending up. Wait, but I have, I, now I have a question. But they don't get any percentage of the coins, right? Correct. No. Just, oh, just, just the credit, credit cards. Just yeah. the credit cards. It's actually, so the fact that the credit card is only 30% of it, approximately is a good so thing. So 70% of it, you get it all. We, yeah, it's 100%. Yeah, it's just like any, any other register. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Th
It's a processing fee. Yeah. So can, may I just interrupt just because I have the statement here um, that um, we took in 2584.25 for April and $413.96 worth processing fees for the fees for the credit card companies. Oh, it's actually not that bad. So. Well, no. Okay. Yeah, a couple of beers. <laughs> Anything else, Joe? I think that's it. A question? Yes. Um, just for public knowledge, uh, you briefly mentioned it. This weekend, Elm Street yes. is going to be closed. Yes. From when to when? Uh, it'll be closed starting at noon, so it'll be um, short term parking in the morning. So that way the vehicles are cleared out, and then <coughs> cars will start arriving at noon up until 1. Is that um, Saturday? Saturday, yep. And so there's, I think originally 30, I think they're up to about 40 participants expected as far away as Canada and Pennsylvania. Cool. All right, Saturday's looking good so far. Yeah, the weather, weather is, is cool. fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> so fun time to come uh, down the village so and see yeah, some yeah, so awesome. interesting for you guys to set that up. Should be some really uh, neat some vehicles. They, uh, yeah, yeah, there'll be some beautiful uh, cars. Beautiful. Definitely not to be missed. And uh, we, we've never closed Elm Street for something like that, so that was a fun thing as well. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you. And you can get some glasses. Stop the All right, game. next up is uh, the financial report. And uh, uh, we all have a copy of the financial report. Uh, I know I had one question, uh, and uh, Phil helped me uh, understand what we might expect from that. Because in looking at our revenue to date um, versus our budget, and we're only a month and a half from the end of the fiscal year, uh, it looked like a significant uh, shortfall. We do, we are expecting some monies in, so just my fellow trustees to understand that where we're still expecting monies. Um, from the state, we are expecting about $11,200 between now and the end of the fiscal year. From the town for uh, uh, expenses related to the village police force uh, for uh, time spent in the town, we're expecting about $64,000. Parking meters and tickets, just a total estimate would be uh, about $10,000 total, maybe a little less than that. So we still have that revenue coming in, but uh, uh, How much are you sure? Well, we that budgeted about, about five thousand, right? We're, we're sh I, I don't think we're going to meet our our, uh, our our budget. Looking at it right now, Joe, but um, if that's going to help that we have that money coming in. It just looks looks very short um, for this part this point in the year. So uh, that relates to me asking. Uh, about can things be moved around from capital reserve? That's things we will look at uh, a little bit later, but uh, we do have those monies coming in still. I, I don't have other questions myself. That was really my big one. Uh, do the other trustees have questions <coughs> on the financial report? No, the answer no. What is the know. state funding, the, the funding from the state, what is that for specifically? Is that going that to be? Reimbursing the village for speeding tickets that the state collected. Okay. And they're always three or four months late. <coughs> Thank you, Phil. Yep, you bet. And the, the highway revenue, what's happening with that line revenue-wise? Really at at uh, the end of the year, those will be balanced out. Okay. What you took in will be handed over to the town right. for maintenance. Right. And now those two will zero out. Uh, anything else? <coughs> I don't I don't I didn't have any other questions. Anything you want to bring to our attention, Phil, beyond what I brought up? No, not on the financial report, no. Thank you. Um, uh, on, um, just under the manager's report, yes. I will report that 
The town will be doing some limited paving on Route 4 to take the curse out of it, same as we did last year, but not until after July 1st, when we have some money. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for that news. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so... The best I can do. Well, that, that will be helpful. There's no question about can it. I, for sure. Can I say something about And I told the boys about that big pothole, Jeff. Let's see how quick it gets done. Thank you. Yes, everyone should go very slowly until that gets fixed in the Mechanic Street lot. <laughs> yeah, breaking the axle. I thought of going fishing there this morning but, uh, in the pothole. But I guess you could get your picture on one of those billboards, too. <laughs> right. It would look cute 100 years from now, wouldn't it? Phil, yep. have we, Phil, have we contacted TD yet about the, the plate? The uh, one yes. in front of oh, TD, sorry, the one in front of people's will fix. Yeah, that okay. Was, yeah, that but, but the one in front of TD yeah. is, is, is a definite. Yeah, okay, yeah. The one in front of TD, the village will do, it needs to get a little warmer to run concrete. Okay. Especially the, today. It needs to get a little warmer for a lot of reasons. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah, I'll get that. You'll make it warmer. Don't don't be bashful to call me and remind me, Carrie. But yes, thank you. Village will do that. Great. Question, Joe. Well, not so much a question. Um, um, a few weeks back, Chief Bliss and I had the opportunity to walk around together, and we'll talk about it later when we get to uh, the beautification report. But uh, the purpose of us walking together was to identify what the chief felt were the principal location for bump outs. Mm -hmm. So we had the opportunity to spend some time together because we were walking up and down um, Route 4 for quite a distance. And we talked a lot about, well, I brought up, and, and, and Robbie really agreed with me that this is an old town. And <coughs> the, 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 the streets that we have, were originally built for buckboards and for 1920 Fords, not for 60-ton trucks. I cannot help, and I keep bringing this up, and I will continue to keep bringing it up. I can't help but think that there's got to be some kind of relationship between the heavy traffic with the, these trucks represent going <coughs> up through our village and what we experienced in terms of the chronic pothole problem that we have every year and other issues w with the road. Um, uh, I, I, I can't help but think there's got to be a relationship there. Well, and we, do something there about... There, there's no way, I don't we, think that... We know there is, but legally, Joe, but we're doing everything we can and have been fighting well, I, the battle, know, as you know, for years to yep. limit uh, truck size and to acquire permits for right. large trucks coming right. through Woodstock. Right. And, uh, and we also pay a, a lobbyist to keep us informed of, because there are people who would like to have that okay. increase. And so yep. that's a, an ongoing battle. So th this is how I respond to that, Jeff. Because the chief brought that up, and he brought it up at the, at the village meeting. And my question was, well, they had these permits. Are they required to carry them with the truck? The answer was yes. Are you allowed to stop them to check and see if they had their permit? The answer was yes. So my suggestion is, given my past experience with truckers, I used to have breakfast with these guys on a mass pike every morning. They don't want to get stopped for anything because none of them are lily white. And they know it. they're the most heavily regulated industry in the country. <coughs> They don't want to get stopped for anything. They get stopped to check those permits as often as they can. They're going to find another way to get through town. There's no doubt in my mind about it. Just like they did when um, Chief Kelly used to hammer them. You mean another way to avoid coming through? Yes, avoid Woodstock. They'll find another way to do it. Uh, they have a better communication system than the CIA. They talk constantly with one another. They do not want to get stopped. If they're stopped, just check and see if they have those permits. 
And in the meantime, well, do you have your flares? And what about your chalk box? Where are they? And let's take a look at your log. They don't want that. And they don't do anything to avoid that. That would be my response to, well, they have a permit. Yeah, they do. But let's see it. Well, I don't, as you know, I don't think we can stop every truck. No, uh, but you can do it more often, I think. Yeah. My, my, in, my, in my opinion. It's a good topic to look into, Joe. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Sure. All right. Moving along, and, and we should look into it. Um, okay. We have a list of tax exempt buildings and what they would be charged taxes if not exempt. I've already actually given that figure out. So uh, let's move on from there. Um, and let's get to new business and the EDC village. Uh, Beautification or is that revitalization now? I respectfully request that that be changed to revitalization. Revitalization is <laughs> yes. a new term. Uh, update, uh, Joe Nidatali yeah. is on that committee, uh, which yeah, is a subcommittee with, of the along EDC, with Beth along, along with Beth and, and Ray, Ray Bourgeois. Bourgeois. Right. And so we're all present. So I'm going to pass out these folders that uh, was compiled by Beth. Thank you, Beth. Did a great job with that. Now on one one side of it is the I got one too good. Um, the grants there you go. There you have that were granted last night. Uh, I'm happy to report that the EDC granted the three grant requests that we submitted. Uh, one of them was for Teagles Landing. Uh, the other was for uh, benches, new benches, and uh, the third one was for bump ups. Something I mentioned just a minute ago. I'm not garbage cans. We're getting to that. Thank you. So the grant of the amount <coughs> came to this right in front of you: five thousand dollar matching funds for Teagle the Landing. Right. Just ten for the public. Right. Uh, ten thousand dollars for the benches and $15,000 for pots for to regulate the bump ups. Seven, seven for benches. Seven thousand for benches seven, and yeah. sixteen thousand. There you go. That's awesome. a sixteen. Now, um, Ray and I spent the day today together shopping around for different kind of pots to use for these bump ups. Uh, we're in the process of maybe adding more benches than we initially thought we were. And l let me explain that a little bit. If things had gone the way they initially planned, the report that was to be this, uh, submitted by Dubois and King would have been done in, uh, by the end of December. Because of certain, six, certain circumstances that arose, uh, everything got pushed back and we didn't get their report until the end of February. At the, after the end of February, we had a uh, citizen meeting, or a meeting with the town people, and to inform them what was in the report and ask for their input. That was done April 21st. After that, we had another meeting inviting people to come in and um, give their opinion about the options that we have put before them regarding pots, uh, trash cans, benches, picnic tables. So because everything got pushed back, and in order to try to meet this season, this summer season, we worked very hard to compile as much information as possible during that time. Um, all the time, and all during that course, we have been discussing, well, what about this idea instead of that idea? We submitted what was chosen by the town folks as their preferred bench, their preferred pot, their preferred trash can. So uh, that is what we're submitting to you tonight. This may change a little bit. Or maybe we're trying to think of maybe 
adding a couple of benches. So if we add a couple of benches, where are we going to get the money to buy the extra benches? And we might uh, cut down a pot or two here or there. But um, essentially, it, it will remain the same. The, the grant you have in front of you, you can look them over. They've been approved and will be submitted to the select board at their next meeting for approval. <laughs> now, we'll get to Teagle's Landing. Uh, they uh, granted a $5,000 matching fund to the trustees beautification fund. Um, Jack Rossi, who is a member of our subcommittee, is, is going to take upon himself to uh, look into the steps that, it, that it need to be replaced. The existing ones are pretty bad, in pretty bad shape, they're all railroad ties. And replace them with more railroad ties means you're going to have to replace them somewhere down the line. So we thought it would be better, and, and Jeff and I had this conversation, that we just put granite stuff there, <laughs> and it's a done deal. Rough granite. Yes. So Jack is going to take that upon himself to uh, <laughs> work, work with some <laughs> <laughs> work, work with uh, some of the people he has worked with in the past, the Masons and, and uh, people that can put him in and do a decent job with that. Jack, much to our amazement, last night it was suggested by some members of the EDC that more attention be paid at Teagle's Landing, that more be done than what we just originally uh, submitted money or request for. So given that, I said, sure, go do as much as you want to pay for. Um, I've asked Jack if he would take on as a job, as a contract, something to get paid for. I mean, he's a great guy. He's done a lot of good things. <coughs> but enough is enough. He should get paid if he's actually going to draw up a plan. And, uh, and we go further with whatever improvements have to be made at Teagle's. So I asked him if he would like to take on that, that, uh, that contract to, uh, to look things over. Is that, is that after? Yeah. That's, that's well, the, the, it'll be like subsequent to installing <coughs> the steps and using the $10,000 that we've already got. For the steps and railings. The steps and railings. And maybe we might have to go for some other plants or something. Okay. But, so what I suggest is that um, Jeff, Jack, one of us from the subcommittee, maybe all of us, get together, meet next week, you're going away. Well, I'll be back the second half of the week. Second half of the week, <coughs> and we all take a look, and then um, commission Jack <coughs> to draw up some plans um, that would make market <coughs> improvements in Teagle's land. And uh, plans that would go to the uh, design review right. before we could go forward. Right. Uh, village I design review. I do have a question. Sure. Have you thought about kind of matching what is being done at the East End Park so that your steps are kind of in a similar fashion to what they're doing so that there's kind of a uniform around town maybe? Continuity. Yeah. We didn't think about that, but it's a good continuity. question. Continuity? Because yeah, they're, they're we working on a bunch of projects right now, so having continuity throughout the town might be a good idea. Might be a good idea. Something we can look at. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, isn't Jack? Aren't you doing that yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be the same person. This Did you take that upon yourself? So I've not thought about this one item. So <laughs> it's it's in process. Mm -hmm. Can so, I ask something? So <laughs> what costs less are more granite steps or or railroad ties? Oh, granite steps are going to cost a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so if the lifespan is pretty much exactly the same when it comes down to it, a hardwood to a granite no, step, it's not the same. No. It's, it says it's about 25 years for both of them. No. Granite will last. Much longer. Yeah, I just read it. <laughs> yeah, you see, you don't see railroad ties for curbing. So, it's granite. What was the final decision? Is it going to be granite? Steps or is this going to be still railroad ties? No, no granite steps. Granite steps. Granite granite steps. Steps. But Jack is putting a plan together. Yes, yeah, Jack thing. is going to be putting a plan together moving forward post granite steps. And railroad Okay, and so railroads. that amount that amount is not included in this. Yes, that's, that's correct. Okay. So, so what we're going to do, I, I am going to propose to the EDC um, 
money to pay Jack and to make any improvements that need to be done beyond the steps and rail. And What's then that? tonight you're needing a decision on our part yes. to match that $5,000 from our uh, the monies the voters have given and trusted with us for beautification in the village. That's right. Um, some of which we were thinking of spending on flower pots and we no longer need to. So um, uh, uh, at some point we will decide on that tonight. Okay. Uh, there's a question of um, trash cans, right? In that uh, brochure, okay. we've, got, we've got pictures of some of the existing ones we have and something what we are proposing. Now, we didn't submit a grant for that this time around because we didn't want to exceed the $50,000 limit. So we thought, let's get this done first, submit another grant proposal for the trash cans. Now, Ray can tell you more about them because he's been really looking into it quite a bit. Ray, you want to take it from here? Now you can, now you can sit down for me. Oh, fine. <laughs> uh, You'll, you'll want to sit up here so that he can hear you. So Phil can hear you. Phil, sorry, right. <laughs> All right, so you have your trash cans that you have in the village, which are really nice looking green and brown barrels with plastic bags hanging over the edges of it. <laughs> well, we have, three, we, have three, we have three nice ones, right? Trash cans. Yeah, but they all look green. Those are nice. Those are not nice. Uh, They're not nice? Not really. Okay. But anyway, those are right. about. All right. <laughs> I believe those are about a thousand dollars each. What I I was in Wilmington, Mass. Uh, about two weeks ago, and there was this trash can that's available. You have to take for about two thousand yes. dollars, uh, which is forty-five gallon split in half, one side recycling, one side trash. That's two. This is two. Yes. Split in half. There's two half. If you look, well, you don't, I don't, it just seems recycling on the other side, yeah, it's just yeah. trash. Oh. Hmm. So, one, so you have to one, walk around to see one that can, one, one container handles both trash and, and recycling. And recycling. Take up, it'll take oh, half no, the space. I understand. It'll take up a little less space, but uh, a lot less. A lot but less. I wonder how inclined people would be to pay attention to which hole they're putting mm -hmm. their trash or recycling in. Mm -hmm. Probably as much as they're doing now. Yeah, I mean, it's now it's pretty obviously separate things, and even now it's not followed uniformly. But I think this would make it might make it more difficult uh, to really separate the two. It might be, but uh, those are showing up everywhere now. Everybody's using them. In other words, it's, it's it would be foreign to them. It, oh, it so just, everybody's using them. Well, no, it, it's, the thing is it takes up less space, less sidewalk space. Um, it's, for, the one, for one of those, it's the same if you buy two of the really nice trash cans, which are not together. They're about five feet from one end to the other. Difficult to clean around. Um, I saw those in use in Burlington, and I did think, you know, looked in and it didn't look like there was any, I mean, the public's going to do what they're going to do. It doesn't matter if you can, you know, you can have somebody give them 10 cents mm -hmm. bottle right next to them and gonna throw it away instead of. <laughs> can, can I ask a question? I don't know how this is done and I apologize. But how do you have any brochures on that, Ray? Um, I have some information. Uh, I can send you the website if you'd like. We, yeah, I'm sure that sounds good. Okay. So we have a public uh, comment slash question. I, I wonder how often are the individual trash can recycling being um, empty versus if you had something that was half the size, how often would those have to be empty? Which is probably why she'll just ask that question about the specs because yeah. he always has particulars in terms of size and what Casella, how often they need to pick up, when it gets filled, where it's placed, and all that stuff. Yeah, and that, and that really oh, yeah, thank you, and I can jump in. Yeah. They get emptied on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and Casella does not work Saturdays and Sundays, so your barrel capacity 
has to get you from Friday morning until Monday morning. Is the idea to or have... Or you need more, more barrels. Is the idea to have more of them around, yes. but not like clumped together in like this one section? You could do that, yes. Because that would make a lot of sense where people wouldn't have to walk to a trash... Well, what, what the other thing, these to are, a dump yard. You, you, you don't have to, you're right, you don't have to carry your trash down two blocks, you can carry it down half a block. Mm. You I just have to carry it sporadically. If, if you came out of uh, you my van. You're saying if there was more. If there were more. And, and more there are a lot. Than we have now, there are a lot of trash yeah. cans in a village, especially on Central Street, that are relatively close together mm -hmm. within walking distance. And I mean, during busy times of year, we, they, right, they're, they're, they're today. insufficient uh, right yeah. now. So and I might add, well, look at the we ones we that put we put out extras in the fall and keep them out through Wassel. Yeah. Because there's not enough to get through foliage. Right. And, uh, and, and as, you, as you noted, they don't work after Friday morning until Monday. And no. Nope. Well, you know, Long you know, time. We know that during foliage season, they are overflowing. And look horrendous on Sunday. By the time we hit Sunday, and not so Monday. so to address that, Jeff, we're planning on more of them. Well, that, that's in, great. in more locations. Yeah. So there'll be, if you want to look at it gallonage-wise, to, totally through the village, there'll be more gallons of uh, receivable trash. Yeah. My my one concern for this would be that. Although Bentley's is not there anymore, they have those big styrofoam to-go containers, and people try to shove them into this inside of a bag, and they can barely fit them in the ones now, and that's what clogs it up. This seems like the receptacle area is quite small of where you can actually enter garbage in, unless you possibly lift it off the top. These are in an area of Burlington that have probably five or six restaurants, Wegmans, um, and they're all over the place. Um, the one and they, is, seem to, they the, seem to be the, sufficient. The one you have pictured here, yeah. Ray, um, it kind of looks like a nuclear facility uh, waste center to me. Yeah. Just the colors. The colors, so, yeah, but, uh, the wording on the bottom. I, I can only, I, and there's <laughs> only so much I can print off. No, I just wonder if that's available. In oh, yeah, no, it's available in, in any color. color and, uh, uh, it's available it's, with writing, without writing. Yeah, you know, Michael. This is just advertising space they were selling on the side. Oh I, no, that's Third that's Avenue. Third that's, Avenue. That's, no, that's that's, that's, that's the street sign. No, it, it's not even that. It's, it's the Couple. area is called Third Avenue, oh. where all these restaurants and stores. Oh, so it's just, so so it's just area branding. Yeah, basically. Is that no, something that we are. can do? Is that part of the two grand or not? I'm going to get into specifics because, yeah. you know, my specifics would be different than who's up to me to be playing barrels. Yeah. Uh, Michael, a question? Yeah, there's, a, there's been a lot of research done at airports on receptacles separating the different types of recyclables and trash and food waste. And they found that different colors and very different logos help people to sort them out because everyone goes up to these things and just wants to get their stuff in there. Having just spent two hours at Race Road to the Pogue diving into the various containers, even though there were people there, people tend to just throw them in. So there's a balance between having one that would perhaps handle several different things versus different ones which tend to, by the research, encourage people to actually sort into different containers the things that they're doing. And what happens is if it's not sorted efficiently enough, when the, the casellers or whoever picks it up or um, the other local uh, Able. contractor, Able. Able, um, it all becomes trash because they can't sort it out. Yeah. So whatever- have, Michael, don't yeah. they have zero sorting? Pardon? Do they not have zero sorting? Zero sorting doesn't really mean zero sorting. Zero sorting is recycling. So trash, it's, it's, so you don't have to sort your recyclables. Right. Basically. right. So trash and recycling is still separate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's one of my biggest concerns. Yeah. I, I love the work you're doing. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I just find this particular one somewhat unattractive. And for the reason Michael just said, 
I, I think it will not work as well to separate recycling and from trash as two separate ones. Could you, could you have the can painted different colors on each side? I, again, I didn't get into particulars. I just... I can we find out about it. that? I can find out, sure. This, this is what we have now. Yeah, no, looks like well, yes, but also, yeah. like, no, I was talking about the better ones. <coughs> yeah, you yeah. have three of the better ones. I know. The rest yeah. of them we're talking about like new this. ones and what they might be. Like. Yeah. And, and we're not suggesting that those. those are good. And what we're good. trying to do is improve upon this. I know mm. that, Joe. Yeah. Okay. We don't want that. We don't I'm just saying, that. If, no, I compare, <laughs> if I compare this, which is yeah. the other ones, mm -hmm. and in two, in two different colors, to this, mm -hmm. I'm not sure this is really what we want. Well, so again, the, the color. I, I don't look into it. Thank you. Thank and you. I, I just have a quick question because it's so showing as a cylinder, like a circle, like a. It's one. You said one forty-five gallon. It's a forty-five gallon barrel. They call it, but it's, it's split in half. Okay, so it would be two separate trash. Two separate. Okay. Two separate. Twenty-two and a half gallons on each side. And and how much are our current ones? <laughs> Those are probably around a The so big dollars. barrels, Jeff, are 55 gallons, oh. and our decorative ones, I believe, are 33 gallons. 33. So yeah. well, those would hold less per side right. than our current. But, but, no, but they would take up less space. And they take up less more space, it would be easier to clean around. You'd have more of them. You'd have more of them. We'll have more of them. So there seems to be pluses and minuses that have right. to be worked out. Actually, yeah. technically, if you looked at it, if you had two of those versus two of those, you'd get more into into theirs than you'd get into each one of those. Because if there's 22 and a half on each side, that yeah. equals 44 and, and 45 yeah. separate barrels, which is bigger than 33. Yeah. You'd actually get more into those. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Each one of those holds thirty-three. I know. I know. Let's not get into that. Let's not get. I'll, I'll find out. Let's 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 work on getting something that we all want to love. It's beautiful and efficient. And it thank works. you for and it works doing this work. Yeah. Can I just make one more comment? There is a big statewide initiative that is about food waste and uh, recycling and there's um, there's signage that they want to be um, have continuity statewide um, so that's something to pay attention to as well going through this process so you know we've had hang-ups with that just because we have certain uh, aesthetics in the village that we want to maintain so there's a delicate balance with that but right, because it, the best thing for the village would be the sustainable big bellies but nobody wants them so Right, it's it is. It's there's a lot of things yeah, no, no, going I, on, I so that. it's just something to to be aware of. I am um, just I am that, just that is moving researching. forward in time. By the way, these benches are made of teak. They're yes, quite beautiful. You all don't need yeah. what? <laughs> I'm going back. He wants to send in his transfer. Ray, thank you. <laughs> yes, that 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 uh, that is one we're gonna we're, we're gonna go with and. Um, we're going to then try the company. Okay, I'll hide the company name. No, I'm just saying, just if anyone goes looking up that company name, it's not the company. Okay. Um, well, it's the bench. It's the style bench, yes. You're going to go with the Kingsley Bait? Yes. Okay. So, and we, we want to, uh, initially we thought, well, it's not too go, go too crazy with the budget. So, the ones in the green, we initially proposed probably putting eight in and keeping some of the ones that seem to be serviceable still. But we've been rethinking it since then and saying, in, in, the, in the spirit of continuity, uh, let's replace them all. Can we use, if you did that, replace them all, which I agree with you. Except you the one around the tree. Oh, yeah, there's the one around the tree, yeah. um, which people love. That would make the green uniform, which yes. would be great in other elements, but we could use those benches perhaps somewhere removed from the green where continuity isn't as much as important as what are we going to do with them other We can put one in front of the now. I could use a new bench. Well, that's in the village. That's visual too. Um, there could be one of these in front of Bison. Yeah, we could probably put one at the Welcome Center. Yeah, we'll or, what about where the food trucks are going to be? Is there any place for that? Yeah, that yeah I'm, I'm thinking away yes. from the actual center of the village to use the one. Yeah, we could hide them. Take off the green. Yeah, we'll somewhere them else. Out. We could put one behind Mount Verde for the guys to hang out. You know, um, the historic <laughs> center. <laughs> Verde, what's that? Okay. 
Can I ask another question? Are all of these decisions being made um, in reference to some sort of uh, palette that has been established or some, I I some idea? Well, I think it's important. That's, that's, in the why, that's, why, that's why we have decided or are looking into, instead of keeping the ones that may be still serviceable on the green, getting rid of them and creating a palette through the whole village okay. with the same bench. And that's why we thought it might be a good idea to replace all the trash cans and find one that we can all agree upon to go throughout the whole village and have more of them. That's why we had thought that the pots for the bump outs are going to be consistent and go through the whole village. How's that? And with the um, pots? Will they be full of anything in the winter? They'll be gone. They'll be gone They'll be in the gone. winter. They won't even be there because yeah. of the uh, plowing. Yeah, uh, yeah we, and so that was a good question. Bump out. That was a good question because you know the question did arise. Well, is there a possibility that when they do the repaving, <coughs> that because these are going to be temporary, right. right? And they're going to come in in the winter time. Is it possible to make it permanent if they work out? Because this, you know, if. We're going to try to be as flexible as possible. I mean, we're going to put them where the chief thinks they're the best place and where they don't work the best. But they may not. So, we'll, you know, we'll just see how it goes and may need more someplace and less someplace else. Uh, so, so it's going to be a temporary situation. If we do a permanent location mm -hmm. with the, with the uh, paving, well, then you've got a problem with plowing. In the wintertime, you're going to have, you know, and then things may change five years from now where, you know, some spot may need more than others and we can do, you know, you can make those adjustments. But so you're saying the bump outs will be temporary? Temporary, okay. yes. yes. It. It'll be five. Okay. They provide, pro yeah. I, uh, five bump outs. Five bump outs. It's going to be one uh, that goes from the covered bridge to the green, one that goes from the green to the end, <coughs> right? That, well, there's more than five. Then there's going to be one that goes from uh, Gillingham's to the flannel store, and then another one that goes from Bentley's to the drugstore, and there's going to be one that goes from Montverde to High Street. Am I missing anything? No, that's okay. five. That's five. That's five. That's five. Yeah. Well, I, the reason I said, because we thought we'd put one down at uh, College Hill, but the chief said no. It's too so that's, uh, too. that's 60 pots. 60 pots. And, and is, the one, is the first one here the one you proposed? Yes. Well, that's the, one, that's the one that the people wanted. That got the most votes. Okay. That went to this one meeting. That way. Yes. What is this? And so how many if this people? adds as much beauty as what the garden club does around the dummy and everything, it'll be yeah, awesome. They're, they're going to be filled with annuals. And they're going to be changed every year. Uh, we're working, Beth is trying to work with, she's doing a good job trying to find uh, somebody who can maintain them. Oh, no, they're, 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 they're not terracotta. It's a terracotta look. Yeah. So, yeah. Do, more so do you have a place to store them. these during the winter? That's what, that's what I was uh, um, going to ask Ken about. And I'm not sure how they're going to be kept swept, keep the pavement swept around it because the machine won't be able to get close. Well, a suggestion that Ray had was uh, somebody go walk, can go around once a week with a uh, leaf, leaf blower. Well, there you go, Joe. You just volunteered yourself. Where did she come? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can we take a, no, don't put that a motion for Joe Di Natale to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah. to water the planters? And, 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 and use, use a leaf blower. Use a leaf blower. That'd be so awesome. <laughs> well, it's really <laughs> nice to see that some EDC money is coming to some physical reality in the village Woodstock. and town of Woodstock. And uh, we applaud that, uh, that that's uh, occurring. And that you guys are working on that. And we thank you. You're welcome. For, so we, we'll be coming back with more ideas about trash cans. Great. Great. Okay. Oh, and one, one last question. Go ahead. When is an estimated beginning to see this stuff. As yeah. soon as we get the money. It has to go before the, the select board, they approve uh, the funds, and then we'll have the money. Like July? Hope, no, hopefully June.
Okay, awesome. That, that, great. That's a great test. So Thank you. Board had to approve each one of those grants. Yes. And all of this is subject to design review, so it has to go all, all right. go through that process. Yeah. And they have to approve it and be fine with it also. Right. Yes. yes. That's right. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you for your time. Jeff, isn't, isn't there supposed to be a vote? Well, I'm about to get to that. <laughs> yes, thank you, Christian. <laughs> so for our part, um, we need to uh, we need to vote to spend the five thousand dollars to match the five thousand dollars that the EDC is putting up for the uh, the railings and the stairs at Teagle's Landing in the village. And so uh, I make a motion to take that five thousand dollars that is aligned from the village trustees for beautification and apply it to what we just discussed second any further discussion Beth you don't have any other needs for beautification your flowers are taken care of mm -hmm. lights are taken care of everything's taken care of I hope that the lights are but the flowers are definitely taken care of okay and, um, the lights are not yet the lights are not yet they, okay. they will be. but we do support the effort for Tingle's Landing. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion carries. Well, so won't there be another 5,000 ups next year anyway? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a that, that we it depends what we put in the budget and the voters approve. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully oh, it could, it could hopefully be any carry. number that the voters want it to we'll, be. We'll have, we'll have something more going on by the, from the ABC. Okay, so let's move along. Uh, we have sustainable Woodstock here uh, with a proposed memorandum of understanding uh, regarding the East End Park. And uh, so let's get to that important piece of business. And sp speaking for Sustainable Woodstock, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this, uh, we all have copies of this memorandum of understanding. Um, and uh, there are some changes that we requested. I don't know if that has come through to you as of yet. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you want us to go through step by step? Sure. Would you please? Okay. Um, okay, so this is a, um, I'll read the statement of mutual benefit and interest. Uh, sustainable, since 2009, Sustainable Woodstock has implemented its mission of inspiring, organizing, and empowering members of the community and the Upper Valley region to integrate environmentally, economically, and socially responsible practices in all aspects of their lives. We encourage resilient communities, promote a thriving local economy, and encourage citizens to conserve and protect natural resources. Our volunteer-based action groups collaborate with local and regional organizations to tackle recycling, energy efficiency, renewable energy, community gardens, recreation, and economic development, including the East End Park. So that's one part of this proposed partnership um, of care for the East End Park. The other part is the village trustees. And, uh, and what is being proposed is some shared duties and responsibilities. Um, the first one suggests, I'll read what you originally suggested. Town of Woodstock will conduct, uh, and actually you meant the village of Woodstock, but um, will conduct regular mowing, except for weed whacking, once annual tree work, lawn fertilization, once annual repair of the access drive down into the yeah. park, regular trash pickup, and general repair. Now, Hi. the problem with that is that we've already got our budget for this coming year. And, and we, uh, we cannot uh, add on to that the tree work. It's so, been done, Okay, we don't have that. We don't have that corrected copy. 
So that's why I'm stating. This is, a, this is one that will go in place, not this year, but in future years? Right. So yeah. basically what we had discussed was that all of these would be done by the village. However, this year for 2019, Sustainable Woodstock has already undertaken, contracted and paid for lawn fertilization and for tree work. So those have been contracted and paid for by Sustainable Woodstock. So essentially, we can discuss an amendment to this number one, okay. so that uh, for the year, fiscal year 2020-2021, mm -hmm. the village could assume those two pieces or consider putting them in the budget for village voters to approve. That's fine as an amendment, so we need to make that amendment to that, I believe. Um, number two, I would suggest, number two reads, Sustainable Woodstock will oversee development of the park and manage slash conduct public events. I would like to add of just a few words which are permitted by the village trustees. Okay. Can I ask what that process will look like so they come and they ask for a permit from the trustees and then they go to you well, well yeah, or the other, oh, the other way, way around, around. Yeah. Yeah. and that's BBC somewhat addressed in the in the second document the policy stuff okay the third element the goal infrastructure incorporated to the east end park will be professionally designed and engineered for maximum flood resiliency that's that's good the trustees agree to coordinate with Sustainable Woodstock to remove public hazards such as fallen trees and repair trails, infrastructure, and vandalism in a timely manner. Um, that, now, if you're talking about trails that don't exist yet, I'm not sure what trails you're talking about. There, well, you can include trails that are uh, pathways uh, that, that currently exist. In, I don't well, know, I'm not sure what you're calling a trail. Did you include all of the trail, meaning the, the staircase, as well as future trails? I could think there was a combination of thoughts there. One was that there's just a little trail off to a bench, a nice little overlook that actually just recently got washed away. <laughs> um, but there's a little plateau where we can put that where it would be safe. And there, the EDC is looking at the park as a platform for trails that are being considered and planned for the future. So I think that it was trying to be more forward looking in terms of trails that will eventually originate at the park and possibly come back to it. Has there been vandalism? Has there been vandalism? No. no. It's not really an issue. <laughs> yeah. So, Since Jack uh, is making everything out of stone. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm just not comfortable with yeah. it, it stating that the trustees would um, um, repair trails. I'd, I'd like to see that removed. Okay. We're happy to, to agree to the maintenance of the existing park and, and uh, in all manners, but um, but uh, let's remove the words existing uh, that we would uh, repair, repair trails. Jeff, it so might just not, not be clear. terribly different, though, from, I'm thinking off the top of my head, it might not be terribly different from the path that goes down the middle of the green. I mean, it, that's that, not no, called that's a trail, but... Right, so I wouldn't have a problem if that was Maybe not trail. something we could identify. But when you're talking about the future potential trail that's going to river loop that, that the EGC is proposing, we're not... We're not yeah, that's not right. really what we're, we're talking about. We're using specificity of right. language around maybe, maybe half this path. Pathways. Pathways. Yeah. pathways. Yeah. pathways. I think trails, I just yeah. can't picture yeah. them. Yeah. Pathways, pathways within the park. Within pathways the park. Within yeah. the existing yeah. park. Good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That would yeah, be fine. Right. Okay. As of that 2019 or 2020. Well, for the, for, no, that would be for the two year uh, of this <coughs> agreement. Right, exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, the EDC's trail is 
not really part of the park, it, but the trailhead, yeah. the start of it, yeah. the yeah. signage, the go this direction yeah. to access the loop trail right. will be at the park. Okay, yeah. let's yeah. just change it to the pathways yeah. in the Good. existing park. Uh, the next, uh, number five, talks about uh, uh, standard liability coverage um, that uh, Sustainable Woodstock will obtain certificates for contractors and vendors working there. That sounds fine to me. I don't see anything <laughs> there. Um, now, this next one is, is a bit open-ended without numbers. A cost share agreement will be negotiated between Sustainable Woodstock and the Village for maintenance and management the budgeted maintenance cost that is built into the current East End Park development plan will be considered part of this budget. But we don't know what that is. No, but rather than putting exact numbers into this document, that's the reason it says will be negotiated. And so that we can at some point sit down and say, here's <laughs> what we're budgeting for and maintenance. Is, and then we will negotiate what right. we can do and what you can yeah. do. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's, mm -hmm. that's clarification. Yeah. Thank you. That's fine then. Yeah. Uh, unless others don't think so. I think that's fine. I have a question. Yes, Serena. Maintenance of the parks, mowing the lawn and stuff like that, that's going to be done by the highway department, correct? So will we be... No, that's contracted out. Okay. That's, that's contracted out, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Sustainable Woodstock will meet with the trustees once per year to review and revise. Cooperative plan for management, maintenance, and projects in the park. Um, and you, you detail that. It might be empty. Might need a new one. That sounds fine. Um, number eight out of nine, the partners will utilize a hybrid approach to the park projects, engaging youth volunteers and professional co contractors. Um, and park projects can include, but are not limited to, trail work. <laughs> 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 pathways. Okay, let's change it to pathways. <laughs> Retaining wall and culvert repair, drainage improvement, rain garden management, signage, benches, picnic tables, riparian buffer plantings, and interpretive exhib exhibits. Interpretive. Interpretive exhibits. Um, Sustainable Woodstock and the trustees will acknowledge all of the partners in any outreach efforts or media press about the park. Yes, because there's been a lot of work done uh, in both directions. Um, should the park fall under natural disaster not fully covered under standard insurance flood policy, Woodstock Town slash Village is not fully responsible for repairing the park to its prior condition. I, I would say it's not legally responsible, is what we're saying. I don't know what yeah. fully means. Jerry, would you like to address that? Well, I don't see the real difference, I mean, legally or fully. I mean, well, we're fully, just not fully responsible. We're well, <laughs> are we partially responsible then? Only to the extent that you own the real estate. <clears throat> yes, because the prior condition uh, might be impossible because the real estate may have disappeared into the river, which has already happened. <laughs> right, so I don't understand how bringing the word legally into it actually changes anything. I make glasses. Phil, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were those words you just used? Well, it's so after I rained, we lost about a quarter, a third of an acre yeah. where we're not allowed to put the dirt back and reestablish the land, but we did stabilize what was left with heavy armor on the riverbank. Right. So, yeah, you own the land, so you're going to want to maintain as much as you can. Right. But there's no state law that says you got to do it. So that... That makes sense. So you're not fully responsible. Right. For, yeah. I was just Only to, to the extent this. that we own the land. Yep. Only to the extent that we own the land. Right. Mm -hmm. We're not reliable to restore it to its prior condition. Right. If the land isn't there. Okay. Only to the extent we own the land should be added there. 
And then you want uh, the partnership to agree to conduct field work to identify needed projects prior to the municipal annual meetings and to notify the Town of Woodstock and the Billings Park Commission of issues. Uh, that makes sense in case we want to add money into budgets for future projects there. And it is acknowledged that Sustainable Woodstock is engaged in discussion with the Billings Park Commission regarding the inclusion of the East End Park into the stewardship and oversight of the Billings Park Commission's townwide system of parks, trails, and recreational lands. So it's important to note that you guys are working with them to really become the stewards eventually yeah, uh, to work out something yeah. in that direction. Okay. And uh, That's great. That'd be great. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, that would be a, a nice arrangement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that includes Faulkner and yeah, yeah. There are there's negotiations. No, no. Faulkner Park is private property. Thank you, Phil. That's owned by the Faulkner Trust. Right. Including up top where the star is. Finally, it says here that the trustees and. Uh, sustainable Woodstock agreed to partner in order to provide sufficient funding to meet the annual park maintenance and management. Sub uh, sustainable Woodstock and the trustees agreed to continue to identify and seek funding for projects of mutual interest to the partners of this memorandum of understanding. The term of this agreement is two years. At the end of the term, the parties will assess the benefits of the agreement and reaffirm or amend it for another term. This agreement may be amended only in a writing signed by all the parties. So uh, with the corrections that we made, uh, I would entertain a motion and then uh, any further discussion. I make a motion with the amendments that have been made to move forward and accept the, accept the memorandum. A second seat. Okay, any other thoughts, questions at this time before we vote on it? Should we have a finalized version before voting? Well, uh, you, you would want to finalize to make sure the wording that, that you Well, the one, so let's, let's pass the motion and then see if your what you prepare for us to sign I matches it. Oh, you're not going to prepare it? I don't prepare. From the minutes, the words that we just used, can you pass them on to these folks? So that we have a. Uh, I mean, I've got the gist of it, but I think that you guys would want to see a revised version before approving it because the okay. wording. Why don't we pass the motion and then you prepare uh, that and you can use the minutes and uh, I can help or any one of us can help you to say, yeah, this is what we agreed to. Okay. And then we then we can get it signed. But let's 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 move forward tonight yeah. since it yeah. seems to be in agreement. I think as long as we've said approve as amended, then that's fine. It helps them get moving. Yeah. What what is the current status in terms of like big projects that are happening? Is there a lot more to be done? Yeah. A lot of good stuff happening. They had a meeting this morning that I couldn't attend, but I think a lot of good stuff happened. In terms of being at the point where it's just maintenance, are you like oh. so far from it still, or it's very yeah. far? Yeah, right. Yeah. This and then you're you're now. seeking your own private funds for that. Right. Yeah. Got it. But the whole thing is based on your year of actually to approve the motion. Right. So I'm just thinking the scope, but the scope is sort of finalized, right? So like maintenance, the scope of the maintenance as things get built out will sort of, it's kind of established at this point. Okay. It's not like a Ferris wheel. There's nothing like. <laughs> a Ferris wheel. That's so exciting. Congratulations, you guys. It's really big. Yeah, I was just thinking about the, the work. Yeah, no, absolutely right. Yeah. It's great. Oh, is river access part of it? All right. Really solid river access? Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank so you for all your hard work. At this point, I was just saying thank you. Uh, we would, I'd like to take the vote itself. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries, and uh, 
I will uh, yeah. a final copy with the amendments. <coughs> I mean, at that point, can sign it and signed by Sandal Woodstock. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much you. for the work you guys do. Yeah. And it's Before. major work and it's a lot of work and you are just an amazing organization in this town. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Thank you. We applaud you. Yeah, it's been years and years and years. I remember the first time you mentioned it, I was like, where? <laughs> what land? Where? The jungle? Are you kidding? <laughs> Talk about the Parktall juice that we're Oh, there right. There, yeah. uh, there was a. a where is it? Park policy. So I have that somewhere. Uh, I don't think I have it. This is the last page. Here it is East End Park Policies. Oh, yeah. Um, this has been attached to your other thing. Yeah, I, I, I do have that here. Um, what part do we. I have no. I I think they're 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 wonderful. Did everybody get to read them? I have no objection to any of your policies that were stated here. Um, it would take a while to read the whole thing. Yeah, yeah publicly. But um, you've been good caretakers, and these policies uh, reflect it. So. Yeah. All right. So moving along to. A little bit that's left on our agenda. Um, the National Park Speed Sign. So uh, at the crosswalk from between Billings uh, Farm and uh, the National Park on the other side of the road, there have been some speed problems. And uh, the safety officer and safety committee chairman for the Mar Marsh Billings Rock and Roll National Historic Park has requested permission to purchase a mobile electronic radar speed sign and, uh, ass and assist our police department in placing one there. And the one they're choosing is uh, one that is uh, not the mobile ones that we're used to seeing in town, but rather one that uh, would uh, be stationary um, in that location. Um, Did Robbie have any insight on that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think they'd be great. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've, uh, they, they have worked with, uh, they've, they've, they've I know that, I think it would work well. I think well Bobby with was meeting with them to discuss, like, locations and such like that. Or, yeah, I think that's what was said. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Wednesday. The 27th. 28th is a Tuesday. That would be a Monday. 28th is a Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, Tuesday the 28th. That's what I'm thinking of. Yep. What time? At 8 a.m. I um, didn't that's that's the day after Memorial Day. Didn't I was Butch, say that's yeah, the day after Memorial didn't Butch Day. Butch I won't be drunk, so I'll be there. I just want to <laughs> just. Didn't Butch want to wait until early June? Has to be moved June. into June. Okay, how about the following, the, the first Tuesday in June? Uh, the 4th. The 4th. Yes. You mean for the joint meeting? For the yes. joint meeting, yes. Is this a, it's we, a morning evening? Of course, evening? your board would need to morning see evening. if that works for them, but yeah. we, we're going to try to work out a date that... Yeah, we're going to meet next to Tuesday night. Um, but I can... I can bring that to them. Can you offer us an alternative at just in case? Sure. And this is morning, right? Mm -hmm. This is a morning meeting? Uh -huh. The fourth uh, or the fifth? I would say the fourth would work for me. Do you have an alternative? Okay, say the fourth. Yes, but yeah, first I do want to find out if it works for this board. I yes. cannot make morning. I could do evening. You can't make any morning. Can the rest of the board make the morning? I can make the morning. Yeah. For 15 minutes, not so good. If it's after 8, I can make it. I can do an 8 a.m. I could do like an 8.05. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> after school drop off. Yeah. Okay, so 8.05, <laughs> we're suggesting 8.05 on Tuesday, June 4th as our first alternative, mm -hmm. as, okay. our, as our first recommendation. And, and then how about... Uh, Thursday the 6th? Sure. Thursday yeah, the okay. 6th, okay. June okay, Thursday the 6th at the same time. 4th or 6th, 8.15. Yes. Eight fifteen sounds like a nice number, better than eight oh five. Yeah. Thank you, Mary. Pastries by Monvert. Pastries by Pastries by Monvert. Yeah, that's 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 part of the deal. Here, it's right The meeting would be here. Okay. Under other business. That will be a joint meeting that will be warned accordingly. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And the agenda the agenda would be the items Anna said. The, uh, the oh, Carrie. Carrie, oh, Carrie said. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. We're the same. The person, Carrie said. <laughs> Carrie's dad? What? Did you say at Carrie's, at Carrie's dad? What no. Say? No. Yes. The gender would change the issues. Carrie's dad. Carrie's dad. Oh, Dick. Oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, oh no. That would be great. Um, okay, other business. Uh, I just want to uh, say that, you know, with our last. At our last board meeting, we requested that uh, garbage, uh, trash cans be moved closer to the area where uh, pie had burned down. It's now a grassy area. And that also uh, dog trash uh, uh, dispensary would be put there. And that has been accomplished as of today. Um, it's been there for like a week and a half. That's not, not the garbage private can. property, right? No, the garbage can was there. Garbage can. Garbage can I've thrown my dog's poop in it. Oh, it was right. it was that long ago? Yeah. And another garbage can has moved further down the street today, so maybe that's the one I'm talking about. Um, and that um, the village lighting contractor did complete the work on the green, uh, the rep repairs that had been requested. Hopefully birds stop eating the grass seed. Yeah. Um, so that leaves us with approval of minutes, unless there's any other business anyone else has to bring up. No. And uh, the minutes, uh, I've got to say, I was so disappointed that I couldn't find a single error. I was going to say they were really I good. had to give an A plus to that. Um, Woo! The minutes, grammatically, content, uh, all the way around. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. He couldn't find good, a kid. single grammatical error. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I she move to approve the perfect minutes. <laughs> I second. From April 9th, 2019. That one, from April 9th, 2019. Uh, approved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, minutes are approved. And, uh, I move to adjourn this meeting. Pending uh, the uh, review of expense Pending the review of expense warrants. Is there a second? Second. Oh, I was like, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And so the meeting is adjourned at 9.04. Oh, who seconded the approval of minutes? Carrie. <laughs>